now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. A bit of Jack Webb legend here, Pat Novak for Hire, the show that really brought him into national prominence from 73 years ago, March 6, 1949, Fleet Lady. And we thank you for tuning in with us here on this Sunday edition of Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. It's the sixth day of March. This is the 65th day of the year. We have 300 days remaining till we get to 2022. Uh, after a 13-day siege by army of 3,000 Mexican troops, the 189 Texas volunteers defending the Alamo defeated on this date in 1836, the fort taken. Bayer registered aspirin as a trademark back in 1899. Fritz Lang's Metropolis released in 1927. Even today, a really weird movie. Uh, Prophet Elijah Muhammad on this date in 1964 officially gave Cassius Clay... The name Muhammad Ali, meaning beloved of Allah. At a press conference on the Senate sustaining President Nixon's veto of an energy bill, the president denied any payment of hush money in connection with the Watergate scandal. I did not authorize payments, and I did not have knowledge of payments to which you have referred. Nixon went further on the topic of granting pardons to those involved in Watergate. I then said that... To pay clemency was wrong. In fact, I think I can quote it directly. I said, it is wrong. That's for sure. Mr. Haldeman was present when I said that. Mr. Dean was present. Both agreed with my conclusion. More questions were asked about Watergate than all of the other topics in the press conference combined. For the first time on this date in 1975, the Zapruder film of the assassination of President Kennedy shown in motion to a national TV audience by Robert J. Broden and Dick Gregory. After 19 years presiding over the CBS Evening News, Walter Cronkite signed up for the last time on this date in 1981. This is my last broadcast as the anchorman of the CBS Evening News. For me, it's a moment for which I long have planned, but which nevertheless comes with some sadness. For almost two decades, after all, we've been meeting like this in the evenings, and I'll miss that. But those who have made anything of this departure, I'm afraid, have made too much. This is but a transition, a passing of the baton. A great broadcaster and gentleman, Doug Edwards, preceded me in this job, and another, Dan Rather, will follow. And anyway, the person who sits here is but the most conspicuous member of a superb team of journalists, writers, reporters, editors, producers, and none of that will change. Furthermore, I'm not even going away. I'll be back from time to time with special news reports and documentaries, and beginning in June, every week with our science program, Universe. Old anchormen, you see, don't fade away. They just keep coming back for more. And that's the way it is. Friday, March 6, 1981. I'll be away on assignment, and Dan Rather will be sitting in here for the next few years. Good night. Cronkite may have had liberal leadings, but you never could really tell it in much of his broadcasting. 22 years after the Justice Department forced the breakup of AT&T and the divestitures of its regional operating companies, the renamed AT&T, formerly Southwest Bell, announced on this date in 2006 the acquisition of Bell South. Today, we don't compete head-to-head with AT&T. However, we compete with major cable companies, and that really is what this is all about. Bell South's President Tom Hamby, who said the merger could take up to a year, it closed nine months later. Former White House aide uh, Scooter Libby found guilty on four or five counts of perjury and obstruction of justice on this date in 2007. Any person telling a lie Uh, under oath to a grand jury is a serious problem. Having someone, a high-level official, do that under oath in a national security investigation is something that can never be acceptable. 
Federal prosecutor Patrick Fitzgerald, Libby, sentenced to 30 months in federal prison, a fine of $250,000, two years of supervised release, including 400 hours of community service. Now, President George W. Bush commuted the prison sentence, but allowed the other penalties to stand. It was on this date in 2018, Forbes named Jeff Bezos as the world's richest person for the first time at $112 billion net worth. But life changed in this date in 2007 for 56-year-old truck driver Ed Neighbors, who on this date won half of the then-record $390 million Mega Millions Bonanza. I sat there, I know, for probably 15 or 20 minutes, and the computer in the truck beat, and I think it was my dispatcher won't know why I was sitting still so long. <laughs> what you tell him? I never did get back to him. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Georgia man took home some 80 million bucks after taxes. When asked what he was going to do with the money, neighbors told reporters, I'm going to do a lot of fishing. Passing away on this date in history, Davy Crockett, novelist Louisa May Alcott, John Philip Sousa, Margaret Dumont, Nelson Eddy, Detective Paul Drake on Perry Mason, William Hopper, Slapsy Maxie Rosenblum, Ayn Rand, also, Ernest Gallo of, of uh, E and J, Ernest and Julio Gallo Wineries, uh, Sheila McRae, Alice Cramden on the '66 to '70 run of Jackie Gleason, uh, Sheila McRae, Nancy Reagan, the former first lady passing away, and uh, actor historian Robert Osborne from Turner Classic Movies. This is the birthday of Cyrano de Bergerac, Ring Lardner, Bob Wills, Ed McMahon. Uh, Mary Wilson of the Supremes, and of course, we can't go without mentioning Lou Costello. Birthday number 75 for Kiki D, singer, also actor, comedian, film producer, and meathead Rob Reiner. Uh, in both Grease movies, Eddie Deason played the nerd character. He was 65, he is 65 today. Actor, comedian Tom Arnold, 63. D.L. Hughley, funny man, 59. Uh, from Friday Night Lights in Nashville, Connie Britton is 55. From One Tree Hill, uh, Moira Kelly is 54. Hello, ladies. The man who portrayed Val Venus for so many years in the WWE, Sean Morley, 51. Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq, turns 5-0 today. Ken Anderson, Best known in the WWE is Mr. Kennedy, 46 years of age. And from Days of Our Lives and 13 Reasons Why, Alicia Bow is 25. Those some of the people celebrating the sixth day of March is their birthday. And if this happens to be your birthday... Hi, we're the four freshmen, and we just want to say... Happy birthday to you! Going back 73 years, March 6, 1949... Jack Webb in Pat Novak for Hire on this Sunday Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station. You know, I've told you all how much my feet hurt from time to time, and I've also told you how much I enjoy getting to work because right here under my desk I have a pair of my slippers. Mike Lindell's new invention with patented fill, the My Pillow fill that, you know, he works in the pillow so well, comfort memory foam, patented impact gel, and it has an indoor outdoor sole for all day use. Right now, they are uh, on sale. If you go to MyPillow.com, click on the Radio Listener Square, you will see my pillow slippers at 50% off, but only for a limited time. Plus, you'll get Mike's soft cover book, What Are the Odds, from Crack Addict to CEO. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the Radio Listener Square, use my promo code USA, or call one 800 951 8175. Use my promo code USA. Savings on overstock items too at MyPillow.com. I think most of you know how much I pride myself on trying to have really good sounding uh, copies of these old shows. Today, unfortunately, is an exception. Uh, there are not very many good copies of Pat Novak for Hire starring Jack Webb out there. I found this one and it's I cleaned it up the best we could. I hope you just enjoy the fact that it's Jack Webb from 73 years ago, March 6, 1949. Jack Webb, Pat Novak for Hire.
Ladies and gentlemen, the American Broadcasting Company brings to its entire network one of radio's most unusual programs. Pat Novak for Hire. That's what the sign out in front of my office says. Pat Novak for hire. You gotta put it in block letters because down on the waterfront in San Francisco there's a price tag on everything. You gotta do that or marry a rich widow. I don't like to work that hard. So I rent boats and do anything else that's cash and carry. Oh, it's all right if you don't mind trouble. Because that's one thing you can't duck. It's like trying to dance the minuet and skis. And the best trouble always looks good from the outside. You're all smiles and feel like a kid opening a hand grenade under the Christmas tree. I found that out Tuesday night. It was around 7 o'clock. I was getting ready to close the office when this little guy showed up. He was about the size of a golf bag with arms. And if he had a cigar box, he could see over a pool table. He walked up to the desk and started talking in a voice that made you think he was trying to put Lily Pons out of work. Hello, you know that? You're doing all right so far. What's on your mind? I'm Jackie Gregg. You heard of me, huh? You're the shy type, I know. I'm Jackie Gregg, the jockey. You heard of me, huh? All right, now I heard of you. Put the show on the road. I'm looking for a horse. You want to find me a horse? Yeah, I breed him in the back room. What color do you want? You're so tough, I got to take that from you? Calm down before you wind up in a boy's choir. If you got anything to sell, put it on the line or beat it. I'm riding a horse tomorrow called Fleet Lady. She's disappeared. She's not here. I'm supposed to ride the sixth race with her tomorrow. The Bonanza Handicap, and she's gone. All right, she's gone. Maybe your horse likes to go out at night. I haven't seen her. Get to the point. I'll give you 200 bucks to find that horse. Somebody took her in a van. I uh, trailed her down here at the waterfront. But you lost him up at the ferry building. That's right. Something funny's going on. My mouth disappeared and you gotta find her. This is a big waterfront and where's the 200 bucks? You'll get that all right. Down by Pier 19. The van turned in. Think you can find Fleet Lady? I don't know. Who owns her? Woman named Sybil Thornton. She's uh, mixed up, I think. Yeah. Why steal your own horse? I don't know. Run a ringer, maybe. That's a tough trick. This woman's got some good ones. You want the 200 bucks? Yeah. How are the odds? What's the difference? You're going to open a book? You better take the 200 bucks now. Yeah, the dough will keep. You sound frightened, Junior. And you sound nosy. Here's the 200. I want you to find the horse. You let me know at the Kingston Hotel, huh? Sure. And if you don't find anything around the waterfront, maybe you better try the track. Ask around there. Yeah. By the way, how do you fit in? How come you got $200 interest in that horse? Maybe I love horses. What do you care if maybe I love horses? I don't. A guy like you's got to love something. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was a sweet proposition. A jockey in search of a horse. There's something phony about the whole thing. I had the 200 bucks, but I didn't feel good. It was like a guy stealing a murder gun to help out in a scrap metal drive. Well, after the little guy left, I closed the office and started to hit the docks, but it didn't work out. You know, you can buy good whiskey these days, so you feel funny walking up to some guy on the pier and asking, have you seen a racehorse around here, mister? By nine, I was sure the horse wasn't around, so I borrowed a car and drove out to the track. I found out where Sybil Thornton's horses were quartered and headed down that way. It was pretty dark, so when I bumped into her, all I got was a vague outline. She had a good-looking vague outline. Oh, I'm very sorry. Yeah, I'm full of regrets, too. Should we try it again? But you're a little mixed up in your animals. They keep horses here. You don't seem to mind. No, you lean nicely, but you'd probably feel safer with a platform. Yeah. Well, we try this again when I've had three good meals. That's a horse. Yes, I know. In fact, I own it. I see. That'd make you Sybil Thornton. Yes, what would it make you? A guy named Pat Novak looking for your horse. I was hired in the waterfront to find her. Why, they grow big on the waterfront. You must get a lot of sun. By the way, is Fleet Lady Missy? Your jockey says she is. That's why I'm snooping around. Didn't know he had any friends. He's got a checkbook. How about Fleet Lady? Is she tucked in bed? Yes. Well, let's take a look, huh? find it very dull, Mr. Novak. Yeah, that's what they said to Anthony. Let's see the horse. Sit yourself. She's down this way. Okay. I'm doing this out of the bigness of my heart. I think you're wasting my generosity, Mr. Novak. I don't use it all this trip. It's from the stable. Come on. 
Down about here. Sleep lady stall. Here. There's a flashlight on the wall. All right. Oh, poor thing. Did your horses die broke, too? Who is it? Fleet lady? Yes, are you satisfied? No, I'm going to ring up headquarters. You crazy. Then I'm going to call Jackie Gregg and tell him his hunch paid off. I wouldn't do that, Mr. Novak. Stop kidding me, sweetheart. She didn't get killed in a fight with another horse. Gregg figured somebody was telling the machine. That's why Fleet Lady's dead. That's why I'm going to call headquarters. Suit yourself, but remember what happened to Fleet Lady. You getting tough, Angel? No. You just wouldn't look good with a saddle, Mr. Novak. <laughs> watched her as she turned and walked out of there. It was the kind of a walk that makes you flip the calendar and find out how far away spring is. I looked around a while, but it didn't do any good. The place was full of doors, so whoever killed Fleet Lady got out easy like a rumor at a church picnic. I closed the door and went down the line to call headquarters. As I stood in there talking, I saw Sybil Thornton drive away. It was a long convertible with red asbestos seat covers. After I called headquarters, I went back and waited near the stable. About a half hour later, a police car pulled up, and when I saw who got out, I began to get unhappy like a three-legged man in a ballet school. It was Hellman from Homicide, and he had a squad with him. All right, all right, I'll talk to him. Hello, Novak. Where's your trainer? Your boys get paid to laugh at you, Hellman. I don't. Yeah, where's the horse? What are you doing on the case? I came for the ride. You mind, Novak? No, I just wondered if they wised up downtown. Huh? Because you could find a dead horse, Hellman. If they staked it out in the middle of Market Street, you'd find it before long. I'll try this time. Where is it? Stall 18 over there. Uh, keep an eye on them, boys. I'll be back in a minute. In here, Novak? Yeah, the one with the teeth like yours. You better shut up, Novak. Don't get jumpy. I, you haven't seen the horse. Just shut up, huh? It wasn't going to be much of a conversation anyway. What color horse was that, Novak? What do you mean? Take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I just took a look. It's a smart horse, Novak. What? That's right. That dead horse in there is wearing a double-breasted suit. Hellman got the message straight. I walked in and took a look. Jackie Gregg was lying there on the floor as dead as last year's love. The sickness didn't show until we rolled him over on his stomach. Somebody had gone duck hunting in the middle of his back. I began to feel a little sick myself, and I was ready to send up for the same gun when Hellman started to talk. You forgot to mention the guy when you phoned headquarters. He wasn't there. I was in here before, and the guy wasn't around. What was he doing under the horse? I don't know. Hellman, maybe he crawled out of a crack. I don't know. There were two shots. I came in and found the horse. Yeah? Check the horse. You're trying to tell me the horse shot back? Who is he? A guy by the name of Jackie Gregg. He gave me 200 bucks to find a missing horse. Yeah? A horse called Fleet Lady running into Mars Handicap. This is the end of the line. How do you know it's the same one? I don't. Maybe you got to be a horse to tell. Why don't you ask one of your boys? <laughs> Yeah, your boy's real tough. I'll call him off, Hellman. He's nasty. We all hate him, Novak. That's all right. I'll put it on your bill, Hellman. That's good. You can write it up at headquarters. Hellman, you ought to rent an idiot. The heavy thinking's too much for you. I can piece this together. We come out here and find a dead man with you kicking up dust 40 feet away. Look, Hellman, I didn't kill the guy and call up headquarters. I know they're bad in homicide, but I'm not that big-hearted. We got a spare hook for you, Novak. That's where you stay until somebody gets you off. Well, you can start out with Sybil Thornton. Another horse? She's got the speed for it. Look her up. She owns Fleet Lady, and she was dashing around in the dark here, playing easy to get. I'll look her up. You better leave the boys behind, after all. She's only a woman. When you see her, ask her about that van down on the waterfront and what she was doing before I made that phone call. I'll tag all the bases. Don't worry, Junior. And if things fit together, you'll both be in the jug. I'll see you later. I got work to do. Yeah, it's getting late. You better put the boys back in the cage. I began to worry after Hellman left. There was no murder gun, and he didn't have too much to go on, but there was no one else wanted my job. Oh, I know the girl was going to have an alibi, and I was the last guy that Jackie Gregg had seen. I had about as much chance as a fat girl at a Princeton prom. Hellman didn't like me, and he was a smart cop with a disposition like a ton of rhubarb. Well, I had to start right from scratch. I felt like Adam the first morning he woke up. So I looked up a guy named Jocko Madigan, an ex-doctor and a boozer who will give you a lift if you show him where the stirrups are. Well, he's a good guy, but he thinks all food makes a gurgle. I hit all the bars and finally found him up at Maggie Nielsen's apartment. She's a good-looking voice that lives up on a hill, and Jocko was working his way into her liquor supply. Hello, 
Patsy. You're just in time to join me for my first drink of the evening. Uh, or uh, one of my first, at least. Yeah, I see. Maggie's not here, but I found her whiskey. It was in plain sight, locked in the closet under some newspapers. All right, Jocko, when are you going to sober up? Oh, I plan to do it briefly on April 1st, when the rest of the world plays the fool also. Look, I'm in trouble, Jocko. you got to help me. Good. I have a special bottle I use to forget your troubles. Now look, stop caressing that jug and listen to me. I'm in a jam. Patsy, there's nothing in nature so sad as a half-empty bottle. It's like a broken vow or an unfulfilled promise in the skies. A falling star almost. All right, Jocko. A falling star and you shrug it off, never realizing that a whole world has ended at that moment. Yeah. A hundred million dreams, maybe, and you watch it fall and make an asinine wish. That's all the good it does a star to fall. It gives some kid a chance to wish for a bicycle. You all finished now, Jocko? Yes. What kind of trouble? Anything I could aggravate? I'm mixed up on it, the track. A guy by the name of Jackie Gregg is dead and I don't look good. Oh, Hellman? Yeah. The guy's a jockey and he hired me to find a horse named Fleet Lady. Did you? The horse and the jockey ran a dead heat, but there's something funny about the whole deal. Did you talk to the jockey? No, not enough. Oh, Patsy, you've got to break yourself of the habit of waiting until people are dead before you think of a question. Mm. Jocko, I want you to hit all the horse rooms. Find out what you can about the six race tomorrow. It's the Bonanza Handicap. Now, hurry up, will you? Well, if it's the six race, why can't we wait a while? Start now. Get everything you can and call me. I'll leave a message at your place. Where are you going? I don't know. Maybe up to see the girl. Oh. Patsy, you're going to be waving at the hangman's wife when they spring the trap door. I gotta see her. She owns Fleet Lady. Well, why don't I see her? She's got a stake somewhere, and I got a lot of questions. What could you do up there? Oh, yes. If it weren't an academic question, I'd argue the point. Oh, it looked like a bum deal right from the start. From 73 years ago, March 6, 1949, Jack Webb. Pat Novak for Hire here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. The news from 73 years ago is next. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that's MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save the typical family 500 bucks a month, and that's huge, but it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The customer satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan, double MediShare works. It's been around for more than a quarter century, and members have shared more than $3 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want to plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. A very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. Thank you for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station. We're listening to an episode of Pat Novak for Hire. That was originally broadcast Sunday, March 6, 1949. In the newspapers of that Sunday 73 years ago, these were some of the headlines. Democrat leaders bid for and failed to get strong Republican support yesterday for their efforts to break a Southern filibuster in the Senate. Dixie Democrats riding what they think is a victory crest kept the Senate for the sixth day from acting on a motion by Senator Lucas of Illinois, their party's leader, to take up a rules change which hits at filibusters. Senator Fulbright, the Democrat of Arkansas, held the floor during most of an abbreviated Saturday session. A clandestine meeting on a 3rd Avenue bus led to the arraignment yesterday of a baby-faced government girl and a Russian United Nations employee on a charge of spying for the Soviet Union. 27-year-old Judith Copeland, saucy, scarcely 5 feet tall, and mentally brilliant, was arraigned before Federal Judge Simon Rifkin with Valerie Gubenechev, 32, a phlegmatic Russian engineer, after Federal Bureau of Investigation agents had trailed her here from Washington on one of her regular weekend trips, which she claimed was for the purpose of visiting her sick parents. 
the alleged spies, she a highly regarded Department of Justice employee, and he a Russian who had planned to go back to Moscow soon, were seized by the G-men while the bus poked along under the 3rd Avenue elevated between 14th and 15th Streets in New York City. The Soviet Union served notice last night it will not recognize nor accept the Western German state now being formed under the guidance of the U.S., Britain, and France. The notice came in a letter from Marshal Velisi de Sokolovsky, the Russian commander in Germany, to General Lucas D. Clay, the U.S. military governor. The letter bitterly attacked the U.S.'s restitution policies in Germany and gave no indication there will be any softening of Russia's Cold War against the West. The Soviet Union promoted Andrei Gromyko, former ambassador to Washington and chief Soviet United Nations delegate, to first deputy foreign minister last night. The 41-year-old Gromyko, who personally cast 24 or 25 vetoes made by Russia during his two years in the UN, succeeds Andrei Vizhinsky, who Friday night took over VM Molotov's as place as foreign minister. Gromyko's appointment announced by Radio Moscow no further details were given, nor any uh, references to Molotov's release from his duties as foreign minister. For the first time since 1941, eggs and milk will be rationed free in London during the spring. Londoners caution that the lifting may be only temporary. Present rations give every infant one egg and a pint of milk a day, and every adult about one egg and two and a half pints of milk a week. And the blind wife of a blind husband was happy shortly after the birth of her baby. She felt the child jump as a photographer's flash bulb went off in General Hospital at Louisville. And hugging her baby closer said gratefully, my baby can see. She and her husband worried months over the possibility that child would be born blind too. And though some of the day's top news stories as reported in the newspapers of Sunday, March 6, 1949, on your radio, Pat Novak for Hire, starring Jack Webb, which continues now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Patsy, you have the instinct for recognizing trouble, but not the intelligence to duck it. Save your breath, will you? You're like a man walking under a scaffold on a building. You realize it may crash down and kill you, but instead of hugging the building where you can't get hurt, like every other dope, you scurry for the edge of the sidewalk where you're bound to get hit if it falls. Jocko, will you get out to those horsepowers? I need facts, not fables. Now give me a hand. All right. Give my love to Fleet Lady. Her name's Sybil Thornton. I'll bet I'm not far wrong. Good night, lover. After I left Jocko, I went to the Chronicle Morgue and looked up the NBC program director, Paul Stangl. We pulled out the clips on Sybil Thornton. They were nice and fat because she'd been to Reno four times and hadn't broke training for years. She'd been traded around more than a Red Sox pitcher. The clipping said she was 32. There were a lot of pictures. And from her eyes, you got the idea she was around 35. But there were arguments the other way, too. Well, there weren't any stories on her for the last few months, just a few items from the columns. They all said the same thing. She was hitting the night spots with a gambler named Rudy Hauser. There were pictures of him, too. Now, he would look good in a cave with heavy curtains. I asked Paul. He said Hauser had a gambling place out on Geary, so I took a cab out there. For ten bucks, the guy at the door said Sybil Thornton had left the place an hour ago. That made me feel good. When Hauser opened the door to his office, I lost the glow. Yeah? What's with you? I got a problem. You got the wrong door. Well, you can't get any tougher, so I'm coming in. Mm. Suit yourself. Never throw anybody out until I'm sure they've lost all their money. What's on your mind? A horse named Fleet Lady. She disappeared at 7 o'clock tonight. Well, you check under the rug, I'll try the cabin. She got back just in time to greet somebody's gunsling. If I say no, will you go out and lose your money like a good boy? Fleet Lady was owned by a gal named Sybil Thornton. The columns say you're number five on her list. Well, they never lie. The whiskey's too good. Also, a little bird says she was in your office an hour ago. That's right. She said your name's Novak. Yeah. Next time you got a bombshell, give it a test run. With Fleet Lady dead, your money's gonna look real good in the six tomorrow. Well, it makes you think the gal would throw a race. For the same reason she goes out with you? Huh? When a gal takes a great dame like you out in public, it generally means the guy's a few bucks ahead of her. <laughs> You want to fight the team now, Novak? Mm-hmm. Just remember, sometimes you can't be right in the gentleman, too. Yeah. I hope that's the way you feel when they pick you up for Jackie Gregg's murder. Huh? Oh, you do a real nice double take, mister. The jockey checked out with a horse. 
I didn't know that, Novak. Yeah, with no brains, you built this gambling club. I didn't know he was dead. If I told you that, Novak, I meant it. It was all right for little punk. I'm sorry he's dead. So is he. I'll see you later, Hauser. I got a nose around and find out where you were tonight. Yeah. You seem all right, Novak. So I'll tell you. If you got any dough left when you leave my table, it's better on a horse named Fleet Lady in the sixth race tomorrow. Do you always bet on a dead horse? You got the tip. Use it or bury it, but don't loan it out. March 6, 1949. Jack Webb starring as Pat Novak for hire on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Are you suffering with arthritis or osteoporosis? Do you have diabetes? Did you know that these are just two of the hundreds of diseases that have seen improvement with Dr. Wallach's incredible longevity products? You can't get them at a health food store. The only way to get them is to call us at 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. Do you have heart disease, fibromyalgia, or high blood pressure? Do you have a terrible time losing weight? Dr. Wallach can help. He was a veterinarian and cured diseases in animals. He felt that he could do the same for humans, so he became a physician. Over 50 years of research and helping people like you goes into every bottle of Dr. Wallach's amazing discoveries. Do you want to feel better? Learn how to treat the cause of your problem rather than covering up the symptoms with drugs. Call 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. We stay with the crime drama theme on Monday's Classic Radio Theater, Gerald Moore, starring in an episode of The Adventures of Philip Marlowe from 72 years ago, March 7, 1950, The Monkey's Uncle. A British butler is really a chimpanzee who kills. No wonder help is hard to get. That'll be on Monday's Classic Radio Theater, but now the conclusion of Jack Webb as Pat Novak for Hire uh, from ABC 73 years ago, March 6, 1949. Well, the case was a regular grab bag when I walked out of Hauser's office. I began to tick off the things that didn't add up. First on the list was that van down on the waterfront. If it was Fleet Lady, who got shot in the stable? If it was the ringer, that meant Fleet Lady would run tomorrow. Oh, I couldn't figure out why Hauser was so sure she'd win. An idea kept racing around in the back of my mind like an ant in a cookie factory. Jackie Gray lied about that van down on the waterfront, but why? Not to bail me out of the poorhouse with 200 bucks. Oh, I got part of the answer when I stopped with the pay telephone and called Hellman. Yeah, Hellman talking. This is Novak. I got some news. You'll have to put it on the back page. What do you got? Your friend Jackie Gray had some love life. Well, there's a chance for you, Hellman. Who's the girl, Sybil Thornton? Yeah, we found her picture in his wallet. The gooey kind. I bet you stole it for long train rides. What time did he die? Two shots from a thirty-two caliber pistol. How about the horse? Forty-five caliber. Two people. It's getting involved. Maybe, maybe not. You got two hands, Novak. Look up a guy named Rudy Hauser. He's got a joint out on Geary Street. I got enough friends. You look him up. I did. He's still talking about Fleet Lady and tomorrow's race. All right, maybe he's sentimental. Look, Novak, I'll pick out my own work. I don't need free help from you. Jackie Gregg paid two hundred bucks and look what he got. That suits yourself, but Rudy Hauser and that gal are close friends. Yeah. Like two part harmony in a telephone booth. Get off the dime, Hellman. Hauser's got that gal in his hip pocket. She owns Fleet Lady and he's betting her to win. You're trying hard, Novak. It's gotta be a slow field to lose to a dead horse. Wake up, Hellman. You couldn't smell a rat in a basement full of cheese. I did all right in your apartment. Huh? That thirty two caliber pistol we found it in your place. See you later. <laughs> I wasn't too worried about that. Hellman's smart enough to know a phony plan. I began to think about that 32 caliber pistol. It's a woman's weapon. Well, that doesn't prove anything. So is a bread knife if she's in a bad mood. Must have been about midnight when I got to Sybil Thornton's place. She was wearing black lounging pajamas tied tight around a slim waist. She looked like a wasp with a nice sting. And she had company. Come in, Mr. Novak. Yeah. Mr. Novak, this is Ronnie Stark. Hello, Novak. Yeah. Well, he's not very friendly, Sybil. He's just parting because they're going to arrest him for Jackie's murder. How do you like Hellman? You've known him longer. Yeah. Somebody left the murder gun up at my place. Where you been all night? Please, Mr. Novak. You're embarrassing Ronnie. That's right. I'm blushing, and it's not the whiskey, Novak. I see. You must stay longer, Ronnie. <sighs> She's persuasive, huh, Novak? See you tomorrow. You won't forget, Ronnie. No, I won't forget. I'm betting on you, Novak. What won't he forget? 
Mr. Novak, I hope nobody ever asks you that question. You don't want to talk about putting that gun in my apartment? No. Let's talk about Rudy Hauser, then. Hmm? Your meat grinder friend. We just had a good talk, and he opened up a new road. What'd you tell him? Don't break a spring. He's all right. Will you do me a favor, Patsy? Like not talking to Hauser anymore, huh? That's right. Won't do you any good, Patsy. It'll do me a lot of good. How's he going to know which horse got killed? I bet you lied to him, Angel. It's my apple cart, Patsy. Leave it alone. Sure. But play your hand right, baby. Because I'm going to watch your cards. And if you got one that says Jackie Drake, I'm going to call you the hard way. Patsy, you nice beast. I really think you would. Sit down. Yeah. A drink? No. Do you good? Not right now. Well, yeah. you've read the book. Just a couple of chapters. I bet they're the right ones. You better watch out, baby. I may be a long shot. Well, you care as long as I bet. I don't. That's good. I didn't think you'd mind. Aren't you beginning to crowd the beachhead? Don't be a sissy, Patsy. You can't live forever. All right, Angel. It's time to wire the folks. Mr. Novak, just wait until you know me better. That's for me. I left the number. It's your fault, then. Yeah. Hello, Patsy. What'd you find out, Jocko? Not much. Nobody seems to care about the sixth race. I care about it. Well, that's because you killed one of the jockeys. The rest of the people have a more casual interest. How do the odds run? No heavy favorites. Vinair and Sleepy Time Gal figure to be the best. At around five to one. What about Fleet Lady? Down the line somewhere. I talked to one fellow. He says she's a dog and couldn't beat a paralytic goose over a hundred yards. Yeah, what else? Well, that's all. What do you mean, that's all? Start digging, Jocko. We're not getting any place. Not even at your end? Huh? Well, I counted on you to do better than that. Good night, lover. <laughs> On the way home, I bought the morning papers. There was no story on Jackie Gregg, no details, and most of the story was a statement by Hellman on Hellman. There was no mention of Fleet Lady. And at one o'clock in the morning, there was nothing I could do but roll into bed. I woke up about nine, called Jocko. It was like sending a message out to the Farallones by Indian Runner. He just muttered and said he'd meet me out at the track. Well, I had to have some more dope, so I called Ira Snow. He calls the races and bets on him. The way he does it, a horse is a real beast of burden. He was playing elf when I got him on the wire. Yeah. Ira, this is Novak. What do you know about the Bonanza handicap? It's a horse race. Now, you're funny. What about the field? Are the horses any good? Uh, for hamburgers, maybe. Nothing else. How about Fleet Lady? Eastern track. Nobody knows. Would she be worth a heavy plunge? Yeah, if you want to be a muck. What's this all about? Ira, I'm in trouble. How about a fix? Could they run a ringer in on Fleet Lady? Yeah, it's been done before, but it ain't easy. That's what I figured. How's Rudy Hauser on horses? He ain't. He got burned a long time ago. He never bets. So I think you're wrong. Look. Novak, I know every guy in town that's got the itch. Rudy Hauser, no. You know a guy named Ronnie Stark? Sure, he runs a book. Why? Nothing. May see you at the track. I'm going to make a bet. Yeah, I'll tell the horses. Well, that left me in a hole. If Ira was right, Rudy Hauser on Fleet Lady didn't make a bit of sense. I got out to the track about 2.30. Jocko was there, and Hellman was wandering around up in the grandstand where they couldn't push him into a starting gate. Sybil Thornton waved from her box as I walked by to get a better shot at the starting line for the sixth. They were almost at the post when Jocko came back from the betting window. Well, Patsy, uh, I bet two dollars on a horse called Scotch Victory. Uh, it seemed like a good omen. Yeah. I saw your friend Rudy Hauser at the window. Huh? He was pouring money down on the favorites to win. Well, that's why the odds have gone down on Vin Air and Sleepy Time Gal. Look at that board, will you? Yeah, Fleet Lady's gone all the way up to 12 to 1. Yeah, from 8 to 1, all the way up. Maybe the word got around she's dead. No, no that's the funny part. She's down there, see, number three on the rail. Yeah. Not a peep out of anybody. is running third by one length. On the outside, it's Vinair and Old Soldier. Going into the clubhouse turn, it's Hot Rudder by two lengths. Sleepy Time Gal by a half length. Fleet Lady is moving up on the outside. It's Vinair fourth by one length. And Old Soldier. Down the back stretch, it's Hot Rudder by two lengths. 
Leap Lady moving up on the outside is now second by one length. She runs Lane well for a ghost. Yeah. Rudy Howes had better hurry up or he won't see much. What? He better hurry. He left the track ten minutes ago. Huh? Are you sure, Jocko? Yes, I heard him tell someone he had to make a phone call just before the betting closed. Well, Jocko, you're a sweetheart. Oh, I like to think Come on, let's go to that stable. The race is over. It was over five minutes ago. Well, how about my two dollars? Come on, will you? There's only one person who will try to fix a horse race. That's a horse. Well, I knew there was going to be trouble fast. The horses were just coming under the wire when I waved to Hellman and started for the stable. When we got there, Sybil Thornton was clearing out like a fire sale. I'm in a hurry, Patsy, darling. Let me by. Now, you made a bad play, Angel. Stick around. Let me by, Patsy. You heard him, lady. Stick around. Thanks, copper. I'll take charge. That's a big gun, Hauser. I got a big beef. He let me drop a hundred grand, Sybil. It's your idea, Rudy. Not this way. He let me drop a hundred grand because you ran Fleet Lady. The program said Fleet Lady, and that's who ran. I brought those odds into line at the window. My other lady looked bad on Fleet Lady. You didn't stay to watch her trail the field. All right, I didn't stay. You lost your hundred grand. You killed the ringer. You were a smart big shot who was going to sew up the race. You ran Fleet Lady and cost me a hundred grand. All right, cop, I'll move away from her. Over this way, Sybil. Well... Oh. Don't let him do it, Patsy. I want to see how tough you are. Come on, Sybil. Let's you and me move against the stall. Watch out, Hauser. You're back into the horse. Hey, grab the horse, Novak. He's going to trample him. You grab him. It's your idea. Is he dead? Yeah. You should have learned the first time you can't beat the horses. That's a bum joke, Novak. I guess it is. Now that we're all here, who do we book for Jackie Gregg's murder? I'll answer that, friend. Who's this guy? It's one you missed, Hellman. Hello, Stark. I know, Vag. Well, what are you waiting for, Sybil? Tell the man you killed Jackie Gregg. Had enough trouble today, Ronnie. Well, you got more coming. Well, you figured it out yet, Novak? Hauser dumped his 80 grand on you. That's right. It's a lot of spending money. Oh, wait a minute. Ronnie, I don't like this. Well, you get your half, baby. I'm going to write out an IOU. When they book you for murder and the vote's in, you can't use it. You wouldn't do a thing like that, Ronnie. A dead girl can't spend 40 grand. She killed your guy, Copper, and tried to palm it off on Novak. I was there, so I'll testify. Ronnie, you're a no good guy. Ah, don't be silly. I love justice. A booker for murder, Copper. I want to tear up that IOU. Hellman finally worked it out. It started out as a fixed race, and when they were all through, it was up to the horse. Rudy Hauser put the squeeze on Sybil for some dough. She offered to run a fast ringer in place of Fleet Lady, so Hauser could pick up a bag full. Rudy just wanted to make sure, so he sent one of his boys around to knock off Fleet Lady. Only the guy killed the ringer instead. Well, that was a break for Sybil. She made a deal with a bookie named Ronnie Stark to take all of Hauser's bets and guarantee him that Fleet Lady couldn't win because she wasn't that good a horse. It panned out that way. She let Hauser think Fleet Lady was dead. He spent the 20 grand at the window pushing up the odds on Fleet Lady and dumped another 80 on her to win. A moving van? Now, that was a phony story Greg used to get me to scare Sybil. He wanted in on the deal. He went back to the stable that night got in a beef, and she killed him. She had him out in her car. When I went to make that phone call, she figured it was a good way to pass the buck. Well, Hellman asked only one question. Why would a nice, tame horse go crazy and trample a guy to death? Jocko had the answer. The horse that killed Hauser was a filly. <laughs> American Broadcasting Company has just brought you the fourth of a new series, Pat Novak, for Hire, starring Jack Webb. Pat Novak is produced and directed by William P. Rousseau. Jocko Madigan is played by Tudor Owen. Inspector Hellman is played by Raymond Burr. Music was composed and conducted by Basil Adlam. 
In our cast were Virginia Gregg, Tal Avery, Stacey Harris, Hugh Thomas, and Carlisle Bibbers. March 6, 1949, Pat Novak for Hire. We're out of time this hour. Visit my webpage, classicradio.stream. Thank this station. Support the advertisers. Tell your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station.